everybody. How y'all doing? Well, been recuperating pretty good. Definitely went better than when the stent was put in. So, on that, that's a good note. So I've been kind of sitting around thinking about stuff to discuss, and there's one of you that's been talking to me on Facebook and that, and I kind of got a little bit of idea, and he just scored some double humped heads. I don't remember his casting right off. Oh, yes, I do. Um, so we're just going to do a little talking here about some old style Chevy heads. And, you know, granted there's the new LS's motors and all that, all this new modern technology, but some of us old guys still like to do the old school. And you know what? I don't care what you build. There will always be somebody faster than you. Always. I don't care what you build. That's just a thing. It's going to happen. You may be fast and dominant for a while, but then one day comes your turn where you're not the fast one anymore. But anyway, so what I got here, oh, don't mind me, I got a dinner must have not settled with me. Okay, here is a late model Vortec head. And the casting number is a, the last three are 520, but it's 1255-2520. And some of you are going, hey, I recognize that number. The old 520, the last three, used to be the heads off of 283 back in the day that looked like this with no bolt holes. Anyway, that's a Vortec style, and it's like that. Here, this rusty old head is, is a double humped, and it is a, where the heck is it? Uh, 291. That's right. It's a 291 casting. It's had screw and studs put in it. Uh, I got this from one of my fellow racing buddies, and he doesn't understand why he had only the one head. And here is, a, let's see, the date code on this is a, Excuse me. The code is a H8 of 7. So it's like a 67, 68 head. 291. No bolt holes. And then as you can see, it is a double humped head. But this is double humped head that's not filled in. So this, I think, is like the 68cc head. Don't hold me to it. I, it's been a while since I've messed with these old style heads. But like I said, there's no accessory bolt holes in that. It kind of makes it hard to mount your alternator. Well, then here is another popular thing to do. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. So you find where your alternator goes. And this is a another double hump. And this one is... The 461s, which these are the 64 or 62 cc head, because see that's squared in and filled in where this one is rounded and not filled in. So somewhere along the way, somebody took and drilled that hole, which usually don't work because it goes right into your oil return and right here in this corner a lot of oil pull up so you've always got oil around there and that ends up leaking so I'm gonna have to get that all plugged and taken care of uh, so yeah you don't want to do that to your head um, there are enough aftermarket brackets out there now or what I would do with that motor is on the alternator bracket I would either double it up with two alternator brackets because when we ran the race car uh, one single alternator lower bracket without a brace gets you about three races in the brakes is what we found out and uh, so yeah you really don't want to do that um, and then let's see uh, 
Not really going to go into the details of uh, porting and polishing right now on these. So that's kind of one of those things that you're better off to show while you're doing it to get her. But otherwise, most of the time, you would just uh, gasket match. And does any of these? Well, yeah, kind of. Kind of like right here. You can see the gasket was here, so you could actually take that corner out. I mean, well, right there, you can see. See the soot? You could actually remove that, so. Oh, God. Call from Hello. Yeah, let's see, where was I? Uh, yeah, so with mounting the alternator on your uh, motor without the bolt hold accessory heads, there's plenty of aftermarket backups, or you can make your own, or uh, what we did is finally fabricated a piece that went from the first head bolt, put a spacer in there, and then that bolted that down fast, and then just gave something. Just so that alternator didn't wiggle on that bracket. That You'd think that upper bracket and the bolts and that lower bracket would have been enough, but yeah, we break them. Oh, something that didn't sit with me, otherwise it's... I got one pill that doctor wants me to take, and it's the one that really tears me up. And whew, anyway, uh, so yeah, so and, and that's the other thing. Oh, and that's what it was too. I got sidetracked. If you notice, in the 291 head and 68, they uh, uh, come on, Sony had the provisions for a thermostat so you can get your true engine temp out of the head or this old uh, 491 or whatever doesn't have that so um, I'm looking at this okay here oof yeah I don't know depending on that might be why they didn't use this head but because look right there they ported that out quite a bit so that head's been opened up quite a bit so in order to use him you're gonna to have to port match and so I get that in the blaster that cleaned up and well, if I find another 291 so I need a single 291 then I got that one so but then here uh, let's see it used to be one two three five yes on the old style small block Chevy's they used to have a five bolt hole per, per cylinder. You had the one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, then the fifth one. Five. Well, here's a modern day head, and they just go to four now per cylinder. And with the aluminum head, so. And then here's something I didn't catch on until recent. Because it always goes exhaust intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, ex intake, exhaust. Well, on the new style heads, it's intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. They uh, changed the layout of the head. So, yeah, that's <laughs> something to pay. And then on the newer motors, too, they've changed the firing order. Which, being a computer, you don't have to worry about it, but, uh, yeah. So there are just a few differences. I mean, here's the old intake ports, and here's, that's an intake port that it spaces, and it's, they've really changed over the years. And then, uh, yeah, they pretty much look to, yeah, no, that's, there's some differences here, too. And, okay, on the Vortec head, yeah, can you see? I'll scan up that one. Well, let's see. Here is one difference. There's more cast iron here and here, and it's not in those areas there. It's more cast here. See the old four, oh, 461. Not 491, 461 casting. Uh, or a heavier head. And then you can see they open up those water passages compared to this. 
basically made those a light duty head but yeah so yeah that's kind of a little bit of on the heads for now and I guess I've been also kicking around the idea of uh, getting set up and maybe do a little bit of a, of a production on manufacturing a DVD of engine build stuff uh, which in though if I did the DVD naturally those videos wouldn't be on the channel but it'd be all on a engine building DVD and uh, maybe we'll do that and get them out and get them sold or whatever and uh, so yeah and now yep, here's one more <laughs> kind of feel out of practice I'm making videos here guys but uh, I'm here one last comparison that's where your rock arms bolt down there's a metal bar that goes there that holds rock arms in place versus you just got the studs here a uh, lot shallower the head bolts are recessed and I guess that's where these uh, LS motor heads down in here if those were casted wrong as soon as you tighten down the head you break them and that's where they're breaking them it's right there so yeah uh, so yeah they've and you can see Baedeker diameter versus smaller it just really amazing how things have changed and uh, like I said some guys just love this new modern LS stuff where the older guys like the old cast iron the old the old iron the old the old stuff the old tried and true stuff so and otherwise I know there's more I was going to talk about all oh, blocks and that and I guess I'm going to sit down and talk to the wife and see if she really wants to as I'm bored out of my gourd and I'm ready to get back to getting stuff done so if that's the case if she's going to be working too much or babysitting too much I, the motor I was going to have her build I might go ahead and get that put together so I can get these parts used up and out of here and into a complete motor and that's the thing I'm trying to get some loose ends tied up and get stuff going and uh, yeah so I guess it just we're talking just my a little bit of my comparison on heads and uh, stuff I've done I mean I haven't even got into what I've done over the years um, but that it's taking time it'll take some time and and that's what I'm kind of fighting is the time it takes to get things done uh, but at least I'm getting I was out here uh, yesterday yeah yesterday and uh, that's when I cleaned up these uh, late model heads trying to decide if they're good or not which I really hope they are uh, so I'm trying to get things lined up and trying to get going again and try and get the engine builds and once the weather gets here and gets warm uh, I got some body work to do some vehicles if I still have them I done Anyway, well, uh, I guess that's what we're calling for today. I just got to get back in the swing of getting things done and that. So, I guess until next time, which uh, be might be a day or two. I just don't know. Just see how things go and that. So, I'm not going to push it, but because... 
I don't want to have a mess like I did at the first of the month last year. You well, know, on December. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, I guess, too, if any of you hang out on Google Hangouts, I've been starting to hang out on Google Hangouts. Otherwise, i got the Facebook or Skype. So, if you guys ever have any questions, just ask away. I... I'll do my best to answer the best I can, so. Anyway, well, nice to see you guys again this year, and things are starting to improve, so we'll go from there. So, talk to you all later. Have a good one.